Hey friends, Dr. Nixon here. In today's live training, we're going to talk all about pain, degeneration, osteoarthritis, uh, what to do if you feel like the Tin Man. Uh, if you've ever felt like that, you get out of bed and you're like, ooh, things hurt. They ache. I feel stiff. I feel rigid. Uh, but I'd like to move. I'd like to feel a lot more mobile. Uh, pay attention. We're going to walk through practical details, tips, tools, uh, helpful people in our community, chiropractic care, what you can do even at home uh, to start creating mobility and decrease pain. So uh, my name is Dr. Nixon. If you've never seen my face before, uh, holistic chiropractor here in Winston-Salem, also practice functional medicine. And um, my, my goal with all of our patients really is to dive down deep into the root causes of, of why you're feeling what you're feeling. Specifically, like I said, in this training, we're talking about pain. So why, why would someone experience pain from arthritis or degeneration? Uh, so we're going to talk a lot about that. We'll also talk to people who are, um, you know, maybe competitive athletes or, uh, you know, weekend warriors running 5Ks and 10Ks, but feeling some dysfunction in their joints, whether it's your, your hips, your backs, your, your, your back, back, your knees, uh, wherever that might be, would love to help give some uh, information and some things that you can do on your own. So again, this webinar is not to treat you or cure you. Um, if I'm your doctor, I would love to help you more. If you have questions, even after this webinar, get a hold of us, uh, patients in our office, you guys know how to text, email, call, uh, you can hop on the phone with me. I do those uh, at no charge for our patients just to talk through it more in detail. If you're not a patient uh, and you want some more information, check our website out, twincityhealth.com, and uh, would love to point you in the right direction, whether you live here in Winston-Salem or not. And it's beautiful in North Carolina right now. So let's, um, yep, let's dive, uh, let's dive into it. So one of the first things I... Um, I want to walk through with you guys really is uh, understanding where degeneration, where arthritis comes from. And um, one of, I, I think the easiest culprits that we can work on is understanding inflammation. So you've heard that word before inflammation. It's a buzzword, a hot topic. Uh, some people just feel like, Oh, I'm so inflamed. Uh, I'm not going to spend too, too much time here. But one of the easiest things in your health journey is focus on food first. What am I consuming that might be damaging or hurting my body? What can I do instead? So two things that cause inflammation, I, I, I would say faster than anything else, are grains and sugar, right? Sugar, brown sugar, raw sugar, uh, whatever type of sugar, white sugar, whatever it is, it's still sugar. Uh, sugar eats up nutrients. It requires minerals. It requires B vitamins uh, to uh, digest and assimilate in your body. So it's more of an anti-nutrient than it is a nutrient. And that in itself can cause inflammation. Grain is the other one. And the reason why is when you consume bread, pizza, crackers, pasta, amylase, uh, even in your mouth starts to break down carbohydrates and will turn that stuff into sugar. I've seen a research study that talked about how two slices of whole wheat bread raise people's blood sugar more than a snicker bar, right? Uh, that doesn't mean you should eat a snicker bar instead of bread. It just to the point, Hey, bread increases blood sugar, sugar causes inflammation. So if you're in pain and you've been diagnosed with, with maybe osteoarthritis, and you want to decrease pain, one of the first logical things you could do is minimize the things that cause pain. One of them nutritionally would be sugar and things that turn into sugar. So what can we do instead? Um, so a couple easy switches. We're all about lateral switches. So instead of sugar, you're going to look at things like stevia or xylitol. Uh, be careful. Too much xylitol can really mess up your digestive system. Uh, I've heard of that happening in like gummy bears or something, but, uh, instead of sugar, use stevia, uh, instead of uh, bread, white bread, holy bread, you can use sprouted grains would be a better version for you. Uh, no bread would be the best, but sprouted grains, something like Ezekiel bread can still have a lot of nutrients in it. And you're moving away from processed grain. So that's tip. Number one is, is get the things that cause inflammation out of your body. Here's the next step. I want you guys to write this down or take a picture or screenshot of this. Next time you go to your primary doctor, I want you guys to ask for
for these two tests. So if you've ever thought to yourself like, man, I'm so inflamed. I, I just feel so swollen. My joints feel achy, red, hot, painful, swollen. Uh, you can actually put a numeric value and you can actually answer the question of, am I inflamed? And you can do it through these two tests. One is called CRP. This stands for C-reactive protein, traditionally used in the cardiovascular world. It's really good at detecting systemic inflammation. Homocysteine is your other one. Uh, this has to do with a methylation process, has to do with your body being able to enzymatically turn over uh, acids that your body would produce that would feel like pain and inflammation. So next time you go to your primary doctor, say, hey, doc, would you mind helping me? Uh, would you run these two tests? And then your doctor goes, uh, yeah, why? Your response is, yeah, I just, I have pain. All right, if this is true for you, then this is what you'd say. I have pain and I want to know if it's coming from inflammation. That's what you say. What you don't say is Dr. Nixon told me to, because <laughs> then they're going to say, well, tell Dr. Nixon to run it. <laughs> I'm not your primary doctor. I'm not going to be your primary doctor. Um, if you need help with functional medicine coaching, I can help you, but do this through your primary CRP, homocysteine. Why pain? If you have pain, I want to know where my inflammation levels are. Those would all be things that they can code for and do it the right way. So get those tested. Uh, when you get them tested, I'd be more than happy to look at them for you. If your doctor doesn't know how to interpret them or doesn't know what to do with them, uh, bring them, uh, if you're a patient of mine, bring them over, email them over, be happy to look at them and help you. Uh, there are uh, a number of good doctors in town who are running these tests on a regular basis. These are not far-fetched tests. These are not weird tests. Uh, they're just more, uh, they're looking a little bit deeper than the surface level to ask the question, why is someone experiencing pain? If your CRP levels are high, what does high mean? To me, anything over one uh, is high. Mine usually comes up around 0 0.4. Uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 uh, over the last 10 years or so is where my number usually stays. Double digits are very bad. Uh, double digits, we're seeing... Um, inflammatory markers to the roof. It usually has to do with some sort of autoimmune disease. Uh, it can have to do with different vascular cancers. It can, it can have a lot of problems, PCOS, endometriosis, uh, with high CRP levels, uh, a lot of inflammatory issues, cardiovascular as well. Um, so if those numbers are high, you want to decrease inflammation. One of the uh, most researched herbs, roots really, one of the most researched roots uh, on inflammation is, is turmeric root. So the little orange root, um, known as, as turmeric, the active compound in there is curcumin. So curcumin has curcuminoids that will help to decrease inflammation. I've seen both of these products work wonders on people's CRP levels to bring inflammation down. So there's a pill form. That's the one I carry in my office. It's from designs for health. The other one is a liquid from a Canadian company called Zuma. Uh, and theirs is a liquid version of, of curcumin. I have this stuff here. It's, it's actually really good and easy to use. Uh, we've been switching over to some liquids, uh, more so for, for people who have a hard time digesting pills, whether the, the pill is, is, the capsule might be cellulose or beeswax. And some people kind of have issues with that. Liquids um, have been really easy. They are really easy to digest. So this has other things in it. Rosemary is in it, organic lavender. Uh, organic turmeric oil, turmeric curcumin, fenugreek extract, uh, ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is an adaptogen. It helps your body adapt to stress, to decrease typically cortisol levels. And it has some essential oil uh, of rosemary in there and a little bit of stevia. So you just kind of shake this up. It's five pounds. Under your tongue. Like that. Hold it. Swallow it. It's really uh, palatable. It's not horrible. I usually put it in water is uh, an easier way to take it. But if you have high CRP or high homocysteine levels, or you're just in pain, curcumin is going to be so helpful for you. Uh, just this past weekend, Dr. J and I did a CrossFit competition and my lower back was very uh, just sore. Uh, I didn't really hurt myself doing anything. Um, I, I try to practice very good biomechanics. And uh, so no, no injuries per se, just soreness and tightness of my muscles. So I did a lot of mobility and took extra curcumin and magnesium um, to get that down. So even on a, just a general basis for our athletes, you can keep that 
in your cabinet. And so if when you are doing something strenuous, adding curcumin into your body will help you decrease the inflammation, get rid of the soreness faster. So that's a piece right there, how to decrease inflammation naturally. Here's the next thing I want to walk you guys through. Under actually understanding degeneration. One of the most common things I hear is someone comes in, they're like, I have arthritis, I have degeneration. Um, it's like, yeah, tell me about it. Uh, and the answer is, yeah, well, my doctor just said, you know, I'm getting older or I just, you know, I'm getting older and wear and tear. And this is just part of life, so to speak. So I want to answer this uh, question. Old age does not cause arthritis. All of your bones are the same age. They all celebrate the same birthday. Uh, you do not have older bones and younger bones. All your bones are the same age. So if arthritis was caused by old age, you would have arthritis in every bone on the same birthday. And it does not work that way. And it never will. It's structure. Poor structure creates poor function. Loss of structure creates loss of function. And this is where degeneration happens. So I want to show you guys this. This is a before and after of one of our patients. Uh, this was recently this year, January of 2022. Uh, gentleman comes in, L4, L5, disc degeneration. They had seen it through, you can see on x-ray, um, had been on steroids, pain pills, muscle relaxers. Because when you're in pain, I get it, you need something. He came into our office looking for a solution. What we walk through is not how to manage a symptom. Managing a symptom is muscle relaxers and pain pills, which is fine, uh, but it doesn't fix a cause, right? You can, you can take enough pain meds to not feel anything, but it doesn't mean you fixed anything. What we walk through is restructuring the spine. So meaning we know there's a normal alignment for the spine. There's a normal structure. So if you can regain structure, you can regain function. And so we run our, our patients through, walk our patients through. Physical therapy, pre and post rehab x-rays, along with chiropractic adjustments to produce this outcome. This is a before and an after several months apart of this gentleman's lower back. When you regain structure, one, you decrease pain, two, you increase function. You can see where in his L5 here, the very last bone down here, you can see where the disc is more hydrated. The space is more open. That's where his pain was coming from numerically. You can see it in this. His first picture right there was a three degree curve. His new one is a 25 degree curve. You wanna increase that number. That's how you can regain structure. And so you do that again through some home exercises, some home rehab, physical therapy protocols in the office, chiropractic structural correction adjustments, and then post rehab. Here are the nutrition things that you can do to help combat joint inflammation. So I'm going to walk you through this. Number one, a joint health supplement. The one that I like the most, and I've tried different ones um, over, over the years, is this one right here. It's from Designs for Health. That's the company. It's, it's called Joint Health. Right? Designs for Health is who creates it. This is the one we carry in our office. The reason I like it is because of the one of the specific ingredients in it is hyaluronic acid. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Just put it in the back of your brain. Hyaluronic acid. Number two, the other ingredient it has in there is collagen from chicken and bovine type one and type two collagens. Vital proteins, that blue bottle right there is a, another great collagen peptide. Collagen makes up your discs, makes up ligaments, tendons. The, um, the integrity of your spine uh, depends on collagen. Uh, obviously skin, hair, nails uh, uh, depend on collagen as well. And you want to make sure that you're getting a good amount of it into your body to rebuild those joints. One of the keys that a lot of people miss out on is if you do not have enough vitamin C. If you don't have enough vitamin C in your body, you're not consuming it enough, you're going to have an issue activating the collagen. So if you're just taking collagen, not enough vitamin C in your diet, most likely you're wasting your time, your energy, and your money on collagen. So I really encourage people, if you're going to do collagen, do vitamin C as well, or make sure you're consuming it through food, citrus food, bell peppers, strawberries, etc. cetera, uh, tomatoes, um, citrus fruits, oranges, et cetera. Uh, make sure you're getting vitamin C. One of the easy um, kind of things, uh, examples maybe to see with vitamin C deficiency would be smokers. So 
smoking, uh, the nicotine specifically robs your body of vitamin C. Uh, vitamin C, then you lose the elasticity of collagen. And so what you see in smokers, people who smoke for years, is their skin starts to get really uh, nasty, really. Uh, it, it really loses the integrity. It starts to become really wrinkled. It'll do the same thing to their lungs. And so that's where you'll start to see asthmatics develop, COPD, et cetera. And um, so obviously, number one, don't smoke. But number two, uh, if you're going to do collagen, you need vitamin C to activate it. So collagen, really good. Joint health, really good. Make sure you're doing vitamin C with it. Remember I talked about hyaluronic acid? All right. Hyaluronic acid comes from the comb of a rooster. So years ago, uh, they discovered, hey, uh, the cartilage of the rooster comb has a lot of hyaluronic acid in it. When you hear the word hyaluronic acid, most uh, women especially have heard this word in the beauty world for beautiful skin and to make your wrinkles go away because it does something to smooth out the collagen, et cetera. And it does. Uh, you can use this stuff internally. In the medical world, there's something called a rooster shot. Um, it's not a vaccine. A rooster shot is what they'll inject into knees, into the knees of patients who have arthritis in their knees. And the goal is to lubricate the joint, get some viscosity, some fluid back into that cartilage. And it can help. It can work. Uh, it's usually temporary. And the reason why it's temporary usually is because it's, you know, again, it doesn't fix the cause. It just buys some time. But you can consume hyaluronic through a pill. And that, my friends, is why I love this supplement, Joint Health. I've seen it work wonders on patients to help them rebuild cartilage. Re rehydrate might be a better word. Re 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 recreate viscosity. Decrease crepitus. Increase mobility through hyaluronic acid. So um, if, if you have knee problems, knee arthritis, shoulders, hips, spine if you've had x-rays in our office and we've told you hey there's compression there's arthritis there's degeneration joint health will serve you and help you as you're trying to correct the structural problem and fix the cause so get on that um here's what happens when the body loses structure so patient one these are two different patients on the left has a curve in their neck. So you are looking at the profile view of the spine from the side, you have the back of the head over there, and then teeth are cut off in that picture, but that's where they would be on the left. The spine is meant to curve. The normal number is a 45 degree angle. This person measures at a 33.7 degree curve. We like that curve. Um, it's, it's, it's really, really good. It's not perfect, but it's good. And you can see this person has disc spaces, Nice and hydrated, everything where it's supposed to be. Patient number two, they have lost their curve. So the medical language is, is complete loss of cervical lordosis. What that looks like is forward head posture or your head coming over your shoulders. Uh, no one wants to be that person that looks like that in the grocery store as we age, but oftentimes that's decades in the making. This person, somewhere along their life, could have been accidents, could have been injuries, whiplash, trauma, things that never got corrected, right? The story often goes, someone gets in a car accident, minor fender bender, nothing's broken. Hey, take some muscle relaxers. You'll be fine in a few weeks. And then decades later, now the person has neck pain, right? Because again, the issue never got corrected. This is a person who ended up going through neck fusion, cervical spine fusion. Surgery can have a time and a place, right? But Unfortunately, what happens is once you lose the curve, now the discs have to work harder. They have to carry more weight. They, they start to become degenerated. The cartilage disappears. And uh, now there's so much compression on the nerve that there's so much pain that the person needs spinal fusion. Our goal is to try to catch things way before that happens to avoid them. This would be a great example. This is the same patient, a uh, before and after. Patient came in uh, with, with neck pain, burning, tingling into the arms, anxiety, depression, low energy. What we did was corrected her cervical curve. So she had numerically seven, eight, nine, a positive two. And if you remember, I said 45 was where it's supposed to be. 
in the, in the process of correcting her spine, got her all the way back to a 43.3. Now the discs are open. The spine's in normal alignment. And remember, structure gives the body function. So now neurotransmitters are functioning more appropriately. They're synapsing how they're supposed to. She was able to get off her anxiety and depression medications, right? Increased energy, not because I cured her. All we did was give her neurological function back via structure and her body healed itself. The way God created it to work is your body heals itself. You get a cut on your finger, it bleeds, and then it heals. Not because you wanted it to or asked it to. It just does it. It just does it. Your body wants to heal. Your job is to figure out why it's not. Why is my body not healing? Figure out the answer. Now put together protocols, have someone walk you through it, a guide, a doctor, a coach, whatever, and now you're moving in the right direction. So here's how we do it. In case you're wondering, structural correction this is what it looks like. One, two, three, process number one is pre-adjustment exercises, warm up the spine, hydrate discs through cerebral spinal fluid motion. Two, corrective chiropractic adjustments, very specific to your spine. Three is our, our big word for the day, neuromuscular re-education. I hope that word uh, is fun for you to say. Neuromuscular re-education, all it means is we're creating new muscle memory. Creating new muscle memory is all, all we're doing there. Um, and, and so through that process, we're able to correct the spine, put it back in more of a normal alignment uh, with our patients. It's like, man, I don't want to see our patients dealing with the same things all the time, year after year after year, right? What we want to do is correct them. I want you to be healthier. A year from now, starting with me now, I want you to be healthier a year from now than you are today. That, that's how we know we're making progress in our lives. So that's the process we walk through for structural correction. This is one of the last things I want to teach you guys. And I'm going to get a little sciencey nerdy with you, but I want this to make sense. One of my big pet peeves is that, oh, it's just old age and I'm just getting older and that's why I have arthritis. I'm going to teach you guys something called Wolf's Law. Wolf's Law states that our bones become thicker and stronger over time to resist forces placed upon them and thinner and weaker if there are no forces to act against. We first look at Wolf's Law with osteoporosis. With osteoporosis, postmenopausal women are told to use weights for weight-bearing exercise to build their bones. Why? Because this is why Wolf's Law. The other way we know about Wolf's Law is for arthritis and degeneration. When you lose structure, right, when, you lose, when you lose structure and there's more force put upon the body, those bones will then become thicker. Them becoming thicker is called arthritis. Your body lays down calcium to try to help you. Your body loves you. The, the, the way we think about it is your head starts going this way, right? Your body will lay down calcium to try to keep you upright. Does that make sense? It'll try and keep, it'll try and keep you from falling down, so to speak. Um, so when we see osteoarthritis, calcium deposits on x-rays, right? My head starts going this way. The body starts laying down calcium. The calcium causes pain and causes rigidness. Now I'm tighter. So now I have two options. I'm either going to cave in to what's happening or I'm going to ask a question and I'm going to say, hey, what's going on here? Right? And if I go to a doctor, he says, oh, just take pain meds. I know, hey, that might help me temporarily, but that's not the solution. What I need is a doctor who would say, yeah, here's why your body's laying down calcium. It's Wolf's Law and you lost structure. And now you need to regain structure. So I'm going to put you through rehab, physical therapy, chiropractic care. You need to do some stuff at home. You need to take some joint health. Have you heard about hyaluronic acid? Are you taking vitamin C? Are you taking collagen? Put the protocols together. Now it's on me to start doing some of those things. You don't have to be perfect, but you want to start doing some of those. And then as you start to regain structure, now you can start to move. All right. Now you can start to regain uh, mobility. One, one of the things... Uh, I like, I like to say is um, when we talk about motion, a body in motion stays in motion. So if you are um, someone, you're watching this and you're like, yeah, I have pain. I have arthritis. I have degeneration. Uh, I don't want you. One of the worst things you can do is give into it, meaning it hurts when I move. So I'm going to choose not to move. 
I'm going to choose to sit in my chair or my, my, my desk or my lazy boy or my couch all day. Uh, that's not the answer. When you do that, it'll degenerate faster because chances are you're putting your spine into a bad alignment by sitting on your couch all day. So a body in motion stays in motion. What we want you to do is find a movement that you can do that doesn't elicit an extreme pain response. That might look like doing very little. It might look like Tai Chi. It might look like chair yoga. It might look like hot yoga. Uh, it might look like dancing, line dancing. It might look like Zumba. I don't actually care what you do. I just want you to move. It might be water. Maybe you feel better in water, right? Maybe it's warm water exercises. Maybe it's water aerobics. Uh, maybe it's just floating around with a noodle. Again, I don't care what you do, but your spine and your body needs to move. Right? That's number one. Number two, find yourself a corrective chiropractor. I have patients who are in their 80s and 90s right now who have chosen somewhere along their life. They found a chiropractor who said, hey, a body in motion stays in motion. Keep taking your, care of your spine. To keep, keep taking care of your joints, take the right supplements and stay active. And they have done that over the last several decades. And now they're in their eighties and their nineties and they're still moving. They're still able to move. No canes, no walkers, no wheelchairs. That's what I want for me and for you. And so find yourself a corrective chiropractor. Uh, if you're not in Winston-Salem, just look up corrective chiropractic in your area. You can also look up max living to find someone who can help you with this. Number three, Find, working out old injuries, find, uh, think about old extremity injuries, hips, ankles, knees. If you've been through something that's torn ligaments, if you've fractured something in your foot, rolled your ankle, there's most likely some dysfunction in those joints. And we know that the longer that thing stays there, the worse it'll get if it's not worked on. So this is where I encourage people to find some sort of mobility worker, uh, a really good massage therapist, a body worker uh, is who I personally go to doing things like yoga, foam rolling, just some other accessory work to create mobility in those joints is ex so extremely helpful. If you're in Winston and you're looking for uh, a body worker, I go to a young lady, her name's Jenny. Uh, her company's called Align. If you reach out to our office, I can send you her contact info. That's who I go to um, a few times a year to work on specifically my right foot and my right hip. I've had some old injuries from college um, in there that I, I just know, hey, if I neglect this uh, for a good 20 or 30 years, I'm going to wish I didn't. And so I work on it periodically to create mobility into it. Um, I also do a lot of foam rolling and uh, just yoga stretches on a weekly basis. And number four, strengthen your body uh, with strength training workouts. And, and this is where you find, again, someone who can help you put some uh, integrity uh, muscle strength around the spine, right? So getting your spine corrected, doing the rehab things, and then core, right? I, I feel like every chiropractor, physical therapist, orthopedic doctor will tell you core strength is so important. It's not just the front and your abs. It's also your obliques on the side, lower back uh, as well. And one of my favorite ways to do this uh, for a good number of our patients is, is actually through Pilates. In town, there's a place called Inner Strength Pilates, and they do it a phenomenal job of stretching and strengthening. Right? And that's one of the reasons I love Pilates. It, it, it stretches and it strengthens at the same time. Really unique but one of, uh, one of the best ways I've seen for people to develop core strength to hold the integrity of their spine together. So I hope all of this information was helpful. I hope you walk away today knowing something uh, than when we started this. And maybe that's Wolf's Law. Maybe it's like, oh, that makes sense. I have arthritis because I have an old injury that never got corrected and I need to correct it. Or Maybe you're a patient and you're in the process of getting adjusted and walking through correction. And, and, and maybe you're like, oh, now it makes sense why I feel better. Or you're in the process and you're like, man, this is taking so long. I would just really encourage you to think through, okay, what else can I add in? Is it my nutrition? Am I consuming too much bread, too much sugar? Should I add curcumin in? What do my blood tests look like? Get those labs ran, CRP, homocysteine. 
Should I be taking curcumin? Maybe it's joint health, especially I've seen it work wonders for knees and elbows and shoulders, adding in some hyaluronic acid and collagen. Or if you're already taking collagen and you didn't know, oh, I'm supposed to add in vitamin C. Maybe that's the thing you walk away with. So I just really encourage you, pick one or two things, start adding those into your lifestyle. Questions you guys have, comments you guys have, shoot them over, email them to us. You can put them in the chat here. Uh, if that's an easier way to do it. But I hope this was helpful and encouraging and enlightening and uh, here for you guys. Remember, structure gives it function. The way I think about it the most is buildings. Um, the structure of this building that I'm standing in lets it function. Its function is to stand up. When you lose structure of a building, first thing you get is cracks. And then you start to see some crumbling. And if the thing becomes structurally unstable, it collapses. You do not want your spine to collapse. You do not get a new spine. I told someone that this morning. Knee replacements, they replace the knee. Hips, you replace the hips. Spine, you screw it together. It's not the same. It's not the same. I will fight tooth and nail. For people not to have spinal surgeries, not because they don't believe in them, not because they're not needed. They, they are needed. They can be needed. We want to avoid them. And the reason why is because once you drill the spine together, now the bones above it and below it just have to work harder. Mo more often than not, the patient just needs another back surgery, another back surgery, and then another back surgery. So we don't want that. We want to avoid that. Um, so I encourage you guys now, if you want to be 80 years old, 90 years old, 100 years old, and mobile, right? That's my goal. No canes, no walkers, no wheelchairs. I want to be able to move on my own. It starts now. It starts in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s. It's never too late to increase mobility. You can get older and get healthier. The job is to increase the structure. So I love you guys. Bless y'all. The body's good. It wants to heal. Hope you guys feel encouraged. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. We'll see you guys next time. This is Dr. Nixon with Twin City Health.